just came home from scary stories to tell in the dark, and I loved it. I didn't see any trailers for it, though I did see this gif pop up once in or twice, which is a shame, because it did spoil my favorite creature in the movie. I basically went into the movie blind, not knowing anything besides this one looping clip. I thought it was going to be an anthology movie, which basically tells separate stories, having no connection. Kind of like Stephen King's Creepshow, but that was not the case, which may have been a better or worse decision, depends on how you look at it. Minor spoilers ahead. The story starts in the 60s where a few kids want to do a Halloween prank to a bully. And they reminded me of the Losers Club from It, but a much smaller scale, because that works better for this movie. And thank god it isn't as long as It, because... I really didn't want to see more of the story. The story seriously is the weakest element of the movie, which, you know, should keep you interested, but it's actually the scenes with the creatures that are most interesting about this movie. But the prank succeeds, and as expected, the bullies don't take it too well and chase them into a drive-in theater, where they meet Ramon. After the bullies leave, they go to a haunted house where they explore and eventually find a book. When I see this scene, I thought, oh, it's one of those stories where the book has stories written in them already that come true. The yawn. Well, I wasn't completely wrong, the stories basically write themselves as they are happening. The bully character traps them in the basement where one character gets bit by a spider. The book being slightly ahead of whatever happens. Now, I'm going to talk about the creatures in this movie, and honestly, they are the best thing about this movie. So if you plan on seeing it, you want to skip to this time. So the bully character was found earlier in the movie beating up this scarecrow that apparently haunted him ever since he was a kid. And looking at him, I can see why a little kid would be horrified of him. Scarecrow kills off the bully character, making him into a scarecrow in a pretty lame CGI sequence. This was one of the weaker scenes because the scarecrow wasn't really given that much time. The whole scene with him is maybe three minutes long, counting when he gets into his story. So, Ramon is believed to be the culprit, and the cops tell him he can't leave town, which is tough anyway because his car is at the garage being fixed from the bully character who had a racist wrecking spree. The girl that took the book noticed that the story wrote itself in the book, and the bully's name was there. She tries to explain what happened, and of course, nobody believes her. We're doing this thing. Then she brings the book back, encounters Ramon, he goes home with her, where he goes to her bedroom and is reading the book. Which freaks her out, of course, because she got rid of it. Another story starts, and this is definitely a good one. It's about a corpse that lost her toe, and goes around saying, Where's my toe? Which sounds funny, right? But the way the scene is made, it didn't make me laugh. It actually had me quite worried for the character, even though he was definitely the weakest out of the bunch. He was... There was no development outside of him being a snarky nerd, which isn't the most interesting character. And the effects on the creature are quite good. So he died. Next up is the girl that got bit in the haunted house when they were trapped by the bully. So she had an expanding lump on her face that keeps growing and growing and growing. She goes to the bathroom, which doesn't make sense to me that much, because she gets to a mirror which she was already sitting in front of to begin with. So, why did she run all the way to the bathroom for another mirror? She was already sitting in front of one. But oh well, the other kids see the book writing the story of her, and they go to her rescue. The lump eventually pops into a tsunami of baby spiders. Which, well, I'm scared of spiders, but this didn't do too much for me, thankfully. So they find her and save her by pouring some disgusting water on her, and she survives. Next up, they want to find out more about the angry spirit, which, by the way, again, the story is the weakest element of the movie. I wish they would do more of the scary stories, like an anthology movie, rather than tie it together with a narrative. Anyways, they go to the place that has her old records, where my favorite creature of the movie is. This thing terrified me. 
I was quite surprised how this creature had no jump scare whatsoever. It relied on the setting, the sound, and the creature itself. This scene was great, and the payoff is so disturbing, I won't spoil it, but it's worth it. After this, they find out the truth about the angry spirit, which is not too interesting. It's probably what you expect. She's misunderstood, and the family was keeping her in, or else she would spoil the beans, yada yada yada. They get caught by the cops for breaking into the place and messing with the stuff they find there. They spend the night in a cell where the climax begins. A head drops from through the chimney, which pronounces its name, and the cop freaks out and instantly empties his revolver into the head. It doesn't phase him in the slightest, and the rest of the body comes through the chimney and rebuilds his body. He then goes after Ramon. His idea is to split up and tell the angry ghost the truth she learned. While Ramon gets chased by the final creature, she gets in and sees life through the eyes of the angry ghost. Which then makes her end up in the basement. At this point, she meets the spirit. And she tells her that the truth is gonna come out if she gets the chance. She will tell the story of how the spirit was kept indoors in the basement as a child because she was a victim of the family's monstrosities. Which, of course, lifts her anger and puts the stories to rest. She then tells the truth about what happened to the family and all seems fine. But there's a tease at the end, where they set up a possible sequel? I mean, I kinda wanna see more, but more so in a maybe an episodic way? Maybe a Netflix series where they have a monster of the week? rather than a almost two-hour movie which has a few stories sprinkled in because the scary stories they're they're good i enjoyed them for the most part scarecrow could have used a little bit more love poor dude but i see this working it's just too bad that it got held back by the story which is really just the weakest element in the movie but the rest is so good i want to see more of it so if they continue this with a sequel, which they set up, and I'm guessing if this movie does well, is gonna happen. And I encourage it. It could be really good. But as it stands, like really, I would love to see more of the scary stories and less of a narrative trying to bind them together. In any case, that has been my review. I hope you enjoyed listening to this. And if you've seen it, what are your thoughts? What was your favorite moment? Are you going to see it? What are your thoughts? Tell me below and I'll see you all next time.